Good morning, private equity lovers, and welcome to this video broadcasted by the Luxembourg Private Equity Association. My name is Mathieu Vos. I co-chair the Young Leader Legal Working Group, and I will be your host today. Today, we will be talking about the EU Commission proposal to review the Alternative Investment Fund Manager Directive. This proposal was issued two weeks ago, and while our colleagues from the AFMD Group are working hard to issue a paper describing in details all the propositions by the EU Commission, we thought it would be nice to give you a flavor of what is coming and discuss very quickly a couple of key proposals. We are very lucky today as we are welcoming uh, in our studios two very young and brilliant lawyers, Zoe Bofferding and Gilles Delporte. My first question goes to you, Zoe. I've heard that the EU Commission wants to review and maybe revamp the current AFMD delegation model. Is that true? Um, so, not exactly. Uh, there are actually no fundamental changes to um, the possibility of an AFM to delegate its portfolio, its risk management function. But uh, ESMA indeed steps to gather further information on the relevant delegation arrangements, which may indirectly lead to increased substance requirements. Um, for instance, the text proposes that every national competent authority files on an annual basis with ESMA um, any notifications regarding any AFM which delegates um, more um, of its portfolio risk management function than it retains. Um, in addition, the Commission intends to review within five years of the entry into force of the changes to AFMD uh, the relevant delegation arrangements uh, with a view of preventing letterbox entities. And, um, and the text also states that um, so any functions that are listed in Annex 1 of AFMD, so also fund administration and marketing, um, well, any of these functions, if they are being delegated by the AFM to a third parties, they will be subject to the AFMD delegation requirements. Um, although there is still some uncertainty about uh, the impact of these delegation arrangements. Okay, I see. So no revamping at this stage, no, which, is, which is good news. Indeed. Thank you. Jill, my next question is for you. Um, is it true that the EU Commission wants to put an end to open-ended debt funds? Not exactly. What we can say is that um, the new proposal introduces a dedicated regime for um, loan origination funds, which comes with significant restrictions for AFIMs managing open-ended uh, loan origination funds. So, um, other than, in addition to uh, other types of debt funds, AFIMs are now expressly allowed to manage uh, loan origination funds, even though the current proposal does not contain a definition of what exactly constitutes a loan origination activity. And the explanatory text to uh, the proposal also mentions that this is meant to address the current concerns as to the ability of funds to lend in light of local, uh, local banking restrictions. However, the proposal does not contain a passport allowing loan funds to originate loans across the EU. So unless the current proposal is significantly extended, uh, separate local rules will remain relevant when assessing the regulatory requirements applicable to loan origination transactions. Now, the, um, the additional requirement that any loan funds in engaging in significant loan origination activity needs to be closed-ended, that one will be very relevant to existing funds as the current proposal does not contain a grandfathering relief for existing funds. Okay, I see. So that means that manager and sponsors of open-ended debt fund will have to keep that on their radar. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Zoe, I understand that there might be new substance requirements and notably the EU Commission proposes that AAFM should have at least two senior managers on the ground. Can you tell us more? Um, yes, so that is uh, indeed correct. Um, this requirement actually applies to the persons effectively conducting the business of the AFM. Um, and this requirement actually will consist in um, having at least two individuals that are sufficiently experienced in the relevant investment strategy that is being pursued by the alternative investment fund, which is being managed by the AFM. Um, these two individuals will also need to be employed full-time or committed full-time to the activities of the AFM. 
and they will need to be resident, as you said, in the European Union. Um, so although this should be manageable for most of the structures, this may also present further challenges to other structures, of course. And um, which is very interesting to see is that the text of the Commission, um, as it is formulated now, actually says that these individuals must be resident in the European Union, which seems to imply that the Commission would allow these individuals to be not necessarily resident in the whole member state of the relevant AFM, but resident in another member state of the European Union. Um, and this concept is, of course, also in line with the idea of the EU passport regime. Um, and then in addition to that, there will also most likely be new requirements uh, that AFMs will need to uh, fulfill or information that they will need to provide the national competent authorities when filing for authorization. Okay, this is very good to know. Uh, thank you. Um, I guess my last question would be uh, for you, Gilles, and it would be about this depositaries. I know that the market uh, is awaiting some kind of depository passport. Is that still on the table? It is still on the table and we can expect it to remain on the table for a couple more years still in light of this proposal. So as you know, in the current regime, um, AFs need to have their depository in their own home member state. And uh, as the Commission has recognized, some concentrated markets face a significant lack of depository service providers. And in order to remedy this, the Commission has now proposed that national competent authorities should be able to, uh, to permit AFIMs and AFs to um, seek depository services in other jurisdictions while the Commission continues within the context of its uh, review of the AIFMB regime to appreciate whether a depository passport is appropriate. But as of now, uh, the AIFMB2 has not been seized as an opportunity to introduce this passport. Okay, I see. Um, so thank you. That was very interesting and uh, very straight to the point. I hope you guys enjoyed this very short video. Stay tuned because our colleagues from the AFMB group will issue a paper on this topic very soon. In the meantime, we wish you all the best for the festive season and uh, take care. Bye-bye.